living in Havana, heading down to Cuba, you knew you knew the situation was going to be poor, but if it's that bad for the, for the guys in the media, you just have to feel terrible for the guys that are actually playing the match. On the day of Canada's pre-match training, you arrive at the stadium and you know, the first thing you kind of notice is that all the Cuban players are still walking around, all the managers. Uh, most, of the, most of the Cubans took in all of Canada's practice. The pitch was just in awful condition. The locker rooms were, from, from every report I got from, from the Canadians, was absolutely dreadful. The deck is, is really stacked against opposing teams that are traveling and, and qualifying. When our teams go down to Central America, you never know what you're going to expect. From the moment you land, there may be difficulties getting through customs, there may be difficulties with transportation, quite often there is. The hotel may not be up to standards. Food is never the same as what you're used to at home because, remember, you're not always at a resort, especially when you're going to play the games. You're in inner city areas sometimes, stadiums are run down and dilapidated, and that's certainly the case in Cuba. These sort of intangibles like pitch condition, like weather. It's quite the leveler. It's really, it's probably probably the worst pitch I've uh, ever played on, I think, but uh, you know, this is, this is CONCACAF and this is, uh, this is, uh, you know, World Cup qualifying and these are the games that you, you have to, you have to win. Uh, look, if, if you want to play in CONCACAF, you have to accept, uh, endure and overcome. And uh, the heat, we can't, we can't do anything about that. The pitch, you can't do anything about that. You only take care of things you can't control. And uh, I told the players that. It was an unbelievably hot day in Havana on that day. Uh, when the clouds moved overhead, it was such a noticeable difference. And the things like that pitch, especially for a team like Canada, which likes to, to pass the ball along the ground, playing it on that awful, awful surface where, you know, it was essentially crabgrass for the entire field, you're not gonna be able to play their game. During the build-up, we had heard that there were going to be a few hundred Voyagers, uh, Canadian fans that are coming to the match. And so, five minutes into the match in our makeshift press box, we look down and, and the support isn't what we thought it'd be. And, and then all of a sudden, we start kind of looking across and seeing a bit of a commotion by the front gate. And then here come hundreds of, of Canadians kind of streaming in with their goofy hats on and their Canadian flags kind of flying behind them. Given that it was so close to the half and it was probably Canada's best chance up to that point, the thought creeping into your mind was it's going to be one of those days. When a guy like Dwayne De Rosario hits the bar in the first half, uh, a few other chances are squandered. You kind of felt like this was a result that wasn't going to go Canada's way again despite you know, doing enough to get a result down there. Cedi el cubano, tiene que buscar ayuda, la encuentra con Edgar, Edgar se perfila, mete el centro, buen centro, el cabezazo, gol, gol de Canadá, Olivier Ocean. David Edgar is a fantastic crosser of the ball, and even when he was on that right side, 
with Ocean in the middle, the thought crept in that, that this could be a good chance. And of course, it was, it was a perfect ball played in by Edgar. The goal that Canada scored in that game, I think, is a microcosm of what we need to see from our Canadian players. And it was really heartening to see. He delivered a, a beautiful cross, a world-class cross, a ball that he sent into Olivier Ocean. And then Olivier Ocean did what we always have trouble doing up front, and that is finishing chances. And he finished that beautifully. Olivier Ocean! We knew what it was going to be like, whether they are playing with 10 or playing with 11. Um, we, we wanted to get, you know, some some sort of put them under pressure by scoring early. That didn't happen for us. And the longer the game went on, of course, you you, you know your anxiety starts to build. But uh, I thought we we kept our our discipline and, and we came away with the result. At the end of the day, I have to be thankful for that. It's unbelievable. That's that's the best thing, like that can happen to a player when their own fans come to the uh, uh, visitors' field. That's that's move. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Thanks, thanks to them for coming. <laughs>